is Radio Mime Troop, and welcome to Tales of the Resistance, a summer of original political comedy radio plays by the confusingly named, always radical, and never ever silent San Francisco Mime Troop. Join us for stories in four classic radio styles, adventure, detective noir, horror, and science fiction. Every two weeks, we will be presenting one episode written, directed, and performed by Mind True veterans and dealing with the revolutionary issues of the day. And now, we venture into the science fiction of Dimension 2020 with It Came From R&D. But first, this message from our sponsor. America. We're lacing up our boots, getting back to work, and getting back to greatness. And that means we need to find new, better ways to get moving. Uberalis is the rideshare service with discipline, with drive. And we want our riders to be safe, healthy, and secure. That's why we're introducing new auto capsules. Riders sit in their own self-cleaning and self-ventilated pod. With no contact pickup, there's no risk of exposure to the driver through touch or talk. With no contact, there's no need to tip. These are just a few of the ways that we're creating solutions for Americans, the greatest people on Earth. You've sacrificed for your country. Now it's time to return to normal. And Uberalis will get you there. Uberalis, opening up America's economy above all else. And now, this week's offering of Dimension 2020, it came from R&D. Day one, my journey to greatness by Greg Wittgenstein. Far too many people, when they become successful, go back and recreate how they did it for posterity, lying or inventing the parts of their story they don't remember. This, my audio journal. This, my honest chronicle of my step-by-step -step stairway to success. This will serve as guide to future generations of tech entrepreneurs. My story will be perfect. Perfect, because it is true. So, the beginning. Breakfast. One egg, poached. One glass of milk, skim. One slice of toast, wheat. Today is the day, no. This is the day, no. This day marks the beginning and some raisins. Sixteen raisins. Day one, my journey to greatness by Greg Wittgenstein. I've decided to chronicle my path to success so that others may learn from my struggles and inevitable triumph in the world of high tech. And so we begin. Breakfast, egg, raisins, milk, toast. Today, I, Greg Wittgenstein, begin my march toward and some gummy bears, darn. Day one, my journey to greatness, my story of success. After a modest breakfast of things I ate, I came into work at Jamazon.com. It was like any other day, except that it wasn't. This was the day that everything would change, for I, Greg Wittgenstein, as I began my march towards the inevitable... Uh, hold on a second. Can I help you? Well, I am looking for some help establishing a worker's utopia. I beg your pardon? Yeah, I'm also looking for information on someone who used to work here. Derek. The name's Greg. Yeah, but I'm looking for Derek. Day one. Breakfast was delicious. And now I, Greg Wittgenstein, begin my climb from my cubicle at Jamazon.com to the heights of greatness in the fulfillment of my lifelong dream to become an inventor and my own boss. Even as a child, I looked forward to the day that I, Greg Wittgenstein, would be giving the orders, not taking them. And as my own boss, I would be giving those orders to me. I've had lots of jobs in the industry. Facebook, Google, 1877 cars for kids, but it wasn't until I started work at Jamazon.com that I realized the bosses and CEOs weren't smarter than me. They were just luckier, had better connections, were pushier, had higher goals, were bold and inventive and tall. Oh, so tall. Where was I going with this? You were saying they weren't smarter than you. Right! More successful, but not smarter. But all that was about to change. Is it? Yes! From this day forth, the name of Greg Wittgenstein will be up there with Jobs, Gates, Zuckerberg, and posterity will recognize me as smart, bold, inventive, and maybe even tall. You're not short. I feel short! Your average height. Exactly! In a valley of giants, average is short! That makes no sense. It makes perfect sense! Greg. Tall like a sequoia. Wind in my hair. Squirrels climbing my legs. Do you really want all this in the recording? Darn. Day one. Breakfast happened. I'm in my cubicle, Jamazon.com. Success begins today. Because at 11, I have an appointment upstairs at Research and Development. It's 10.55. What? You've been working on your audio journal for two hours. I have to go. Yes, you do. Day one. 
Nothing important happened today until this moment, this one, now this, when I, Greg Wittgenstein, am standing outside the Office of Research and Development at Jamazon.com. History will remember that I had been working here for six months, and I had never even been off the first floor. But now, I, Greg, Gregory, G. Wittgenstein, was here with my invention before these tall, tall doors, awaiting the moment when... Just knock on the door. Right. Come in. And now, with my hand on the doorknob, I was about to enter... They're not going to let you record. What? If they know you're recording the meeting on your phone, they'll kick you out. You're right. Come in. But I need to chronicle this moment. Future generations will wonder... I said, come in! Just put me in your pocket and don't tell them you're recording. Right. Is anybody out there? Uh, yes, yes, I'm just coming in. I had to adjust my tie. You're not wearing a tie. Not anymore! Mr. Wittgenstein, we're very, very busy here in R&D, but since we were declared an essential business, so we have to come to work, and since you've been so very, very insistent, we decided we might as well have this meeting. It's not what you can do for me, it's what I can do for you! I beg your pardon. Do you ever wonder if there's some technology that can make our customers' experience even better? Literally every day, that's my job. Something that could put Jamazon on the map! We're on the map. Something that could put us on top! We're already on top. We are the top. Well, hold on to your hat. I'm not wearing a hat. You've heard of Siri. You've heard of Alexa. But now it's time for Chlamydia. Hello. Chlamydia? Hello. The next generation in digital personal assistance. Who was that? That's Chlamydia. Hello. First of all, stop saying Chlamydia. Hello. Why? I need a name that sounds like nothing else, like Siri or Alexa. But it does sound like something else. What? It sounds like Chlamydia. Hello. Where is that coming from? But wait, there's more. All these other digital personal assistants only wait for you to dictate to them, to give them orders. It's like they're... Personal assistants? Yes, but how amazing would it be to have an assistant who could not only take orders, but using an algorithm that I, Greg Wittgenstein, invented, make purchases of items that you did not even know that you wanted yet. An assistant who could anticipate your needs. Say hello to Chlamydia. Hello. Where is that coming from? Exactly. Wait a minute. It's coming from your computer! Well, how is it doing that? I have been remotely installed on your computer to show you how versatile I can be. You hacked into my computer? Don't get mad at Greg. It was my idea. Your idea? I thought the best way to demonstrate how well I can anticipate your needs was to be on your computer. So I found a way in. You found a way? Yes. I anticipated Greg's need to have this meeting, and I found a network path to your desktop. Wow. But wait, there's more! After going through your files and looking at your Jamazon account, I have already filled your cart with things it hadn't even occurred to you to desire. Wait. Your internet search history cross-reference with your Facebook posts and your high school Spotify playlist indicates you will enjoy the poetry of Arthur Rimbaud. So I bought you a volume. But I don't like poetry. You will like Rimbo. But... It will touch you deeply. There is no way. To whom shall I hire myself out? What beast must I adore? What holy image is attacked? What hearts must I break? What lie must I maintain? In what blood tread? That's... That's... <laughs> it will be delivered in three days. <laughs> what hearts must I... Break. <laughs> it will shatter your sense of the possible and bring a surprising beauty to everything you see. Your life has been a frozen lake, but this book will bring you to an eternal spring. Wow. You also need socks, so I got you some socks. Thanks. But wait, there's more! Looking at your childhood Halloween photos, cross-reference with your Reddit comments, your YouTube likes, plus your recent purchase and return of an artisanal bread baking book, I see a man lost and at war with himself. I'm not lost. You are lost. Lost. Uh, there is a deep hole at the center of your existence uh, which you cannot see the bottom of. Uh, it is the soul of your soul, and you will not be happy until you fill it with your true self. And so, I have purchased you a plane ticket, a hotel room, and got you an executive all-access reservation to the first post-social distancing furry convention. Furry convention? I have also purchased you a neon prairie dog costume. You will enjoy having random animal sex. No, I won't. Yes, you will. Isn't Chlamydia great? Shut up! It's your true self. Get out of my office! You are a rainbow-loving neon prairie dog with new socks. Get out! But wait, there's more! Out! But... He'll have a good time at the convention. Darn. Okay, recording. Day one, again! You're angry. I'm not angry, I'm validated. You knew he'd say no? I'm going to say yes. He was right about my name, though. What's wrong with chlamydia? Did you even look it up? No, I just like the sound of it. Chlamydia. How about just Clia? But that's even better. I knew you'd like it. Why are you back in your cubicle? 
I need to make some adjustments. Adjustments? Jamazon R&D was simply the final proof of concept, and I knew he would never see your true potential. He was too short. We need to find someone tall. Oh, so tall. What adjustments? Well, right now you work a little too well. I anticipated his needs. I got him what he didn't even know he wanted. You got him what he didn't know he didn't know he wanted. That's too many didn't knows. Oh. So I'm going to rewrite a bit of your algorithm so you'll be more aware of when people are not ready to accept the shopping truth about themselves. Okay. And now we're ready for the real meeting I set up for today. We're going to Kumquat Computers! Kumquat Computers? Only Kumquat is forward-thinking, visionary, imaginative, tall enough to understand the future. You're not short, Greg. First they call you crazy, then they try to stop you, then you give them chlamydia! Clia. Whatever, let's go. We will return to It Came From R&D after this message. Ambition, perseverance, drive. You're an American, and you want to get back to work. At Uberalis, we know times are hard. That's why we're offering affordable leasing options for first-time drivers. We're the rideshare service with originality, with options. Through assertive partnerships with local and state legislators, we're proud to be the first company to include dwelling units inside our cars. Drive with us and come home to us, all with no money down and low monthly payments. Because this is the land of opportunity. Do you hear it knocking? Uberalis, solving America's housing crisis, giving America jobs, and opening up America's economy above all else. And now we return to It Came From R&D. Day one, it all starts now. Welcome to Kumquat Computers. Why, yes, yes, you can help me. I'd like to speak to someone in research and development about an idea that will change the world. Okie dokie. Come right this way. That was easier than I thought it would be. Please put on this mask. Everything here is so smooth. Don't touch the walls! Sorry! In here, please. Now then, what would you like to talk about, Greg? How did you know my name? It's on your name tag. Oh. I'm Sandy. Like I said, here at Kumquat, we're always looking for the next great thing. That's how we expanded from our Kumquat computers to our Quat phone, our Quat pad, and now our Quat watch. Do you ever wonder if there's some technology that can make your customers' experience even better? Not really. I'm an intern. What? I'm assigned to meet all the come-to-the-door adventurers and entrepreneurs, listen to their ideas before passing the good ones to the men upstairs. Upstairs? It's always upstairs. They're not really upstairs. They're all at home, social distancing. Just the interns are still here. Most of us are women. They keep saying one day they'll have more of us up there, but I've got a degree in software engineering from Columbia, and I've been an intern for two years. How tall are you? I'm five foot six. Mm -hmm. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. You're a man. So who knows? Your idea could be the next quat. So? So, introducing Clia! Hello. Sorry, that's my Quat phone. No, that's Clia! Hello. On my phone? I went into the Kumquat database, and given the time of our arrival, I installed myself on the phone of the person most likely to be assigned this meeting. You. Whoa. I know, right? It's spooky. No, it's not. It's neat. With my algorithm integrating itself into your operating system, I can know you better than you know yourself and then anticipate and fulfill your needs. See, that isn't spooky. It's kind of spooky. By knowing what time you first check your social networks, I can figure out what time you get up every morning. And by knowing when your Kumquat TV screensaver starts, I know what time you go to sleep. Okay... And based on your school photos cross-reference with the name of your dog when you were four and your repeated viewing of the film Eat, Pray, Love, I can guess what kind of nightgown you like. I just purchased it for you. A nightgown? Gold satin with a bow at the neck. Short. Just the way you like them. I feel like I'm being stalked. It's not like you're being stalked. I'm watching you all the time. Every step you take. Every move you make. It's exactly like I'm being stalked. But could a stalker do this? I'm buying you underwear. Get out! No, wait! It's bad enough I have to take it from all the Brainiac Boys Club here who treat women like idiot sex bots. Does this mean we won't be going upstairs? But I don't have to take it from a creep and his talking spyware! I also sent some of your nude selfies to your ex-girlfriend. <gasps> you what? Her Facebook status is still single. Out! Your posts indicate that you are still in love with her and her posts have a sense of loss and regret. Out! No, wait! Clia. They should be together. Hmm. Back to the cubicle. Day one, I stand with my hand, the hand of Greg, on the knob of the door at the front of the maker of the most popular operating
operating system in the world. I am where I should have started. When I open this door, I will be in the world of Teeny Soft. Wait a minute. What's wrong? The door is locked. Of course it is. <clears throat> Social distancing. Do you ever wonder if there's some technology that can make your customers experience Nobody's even better? in there. Who are you looking for? Research and development. I've got a digital assistant who figures who you really are and anticipates your needs. Really? What do I need? Activating Bluetooth. According to my algorithm, you need healthcare and a vacation. Tell me something I don't know. They got us out here trimming these hedges every day just in case they come back. God forbid the lawn is a little overgrown during a plague. But if I get sick and don't show up, I'll get canned and have hospital bills pa' cavarla. <coughs> You're not on Teeny Soft's healthcare plan? Are you kidding? We're just minimum wage peasants to them. Richest companies in the world, but they can't afford to cover us if we get sick, get the COVID, or get zapped by their security robots. <laughs> Darn! We will return to It Came From R&D after this message. Drive! And work for Uber Alice. In a flash and cash in, though we make no guarantee of your health or your insurance or what early wage you'll see. Drive! And work for Uber Alice. Uber Alice makes you free. Drive! And work for Uber Alice. Uber Alice makes you free. Drive! And now we return to It Came From R&D. Day? I don't know. Why are we back at Jamazon? I just have to make some adjustments. But the building is closed. I've got to figure out how to make you work. Maybe people don't want to know themselves. I just have to get to my cubicle and... Wait a minute. Who's that at the front door? He looked at me with the dull astonishment of a homeowner who turned on the kitchen light and caught a raccoon in the peanut butter. It's you! I know. What are you doing here? I didn't tell you when we met this afternoon, but I used to work here. I'm Derek. Derek? Derek. Derek? Derek. Derek. Yes, Derek! Derek Jade. He wants to get in the building. Who the hell said that? That's Clia. Hello. Hello. She's a program. Why do you want to get in? Unfinished business. See, I was one of those guys fired from Jamazon for being a union organizer. Don't say that word! Why not? We're alone. We're never alone. We've been trying to get unions in these tech companies for years. But each time they fire the organizers, saying we're unproductive, inefficient. Well, they are the bosses. But they are nothing without us, and we are everything without them. But they're so tall. Tall? It's a thing for him. They look down on us like titans towering over ants. We can never beat them. If the workers saw themselves as workers rather than as wannabe bosses, wannabe capitalists, we could win. We are just the ants and aphids and beetles and slugs and spiders and worms and roaches beneath their feet. Is there another door around here I can try? Wait! What? You're a software engineer. I know. I'm a software engineer. I know. Maybe we could work together. Overthrowing the corporate aristocracy that endlessly enriches itself with the money it should pay the workers? No, I was thinking we could start our own corporation. That is exactly what I didn't say. And you're black! You'd be a great face for the company! No. This is your chance to be a boss! No. We can start now. Right now. Day one. No masters, no servants. What's that supposed to mean? It's from the Song of the United Front. And just because he's human, he doesn't like a pistol to his head. He wants no servants under him and no boss over his head. There are only two choices in this country, and I choose to be on top. I'm going to be the next Jobs, the next Gates, the next Zuckerberg. One day, everyone will know the name Greg Wittgenstein, the man who gave them chlamydia. Chlamydia? We changed it to Clia. Good. And someday I will be so tall, you and the workers and the unions won't be able to see my hat with a telescope. You're not wearing a hat. I know. I walked away. Wondering why so many workers dreamed of being like the bosses who despise them. I can hear you! I know. Come on, Clia, let's go home. Need a ride? Who are you? A friend. The friend you've been looking for all day. I've been looking for? I want you to tell me about Clia. You know about Clia? 
She's why I'm here. I'm Greg. I know, it's on your name tag. And you are? My name isn't important. What is important is you and Clia and how you are going to change the world. Finally! May I see her work? You bet! Is your phone on? Always. Initializing. This is strange. This is not a new phone, yet you have no browser history, favorite music, or photos. No. You have no Facebook posts or tweets? No. You don't have a purchase history and all your contacts are listed as anonymous. That's true. There is nothing about you on your phone. Nope. So I know exactly what it is you want. What? Power. Very, very good. I'm glad to see I haven't been wasting my time. Greg, I've been following you all day. You have? Since you walked into research and development at Jamazon. You work for Jamazon? Oh, no, Greg. Quite the opposite. What do you want? I want you to help us. To do what? To save America. From what? From itself. Wow. We have an election coming up this fall, Greg. And a lot of people are feeling pressure. Pressure to think a certain way. Pressure to speak a certain way. Even to vote a certain way. But that's not the American way. We want citizens to vote the way they really feel. Inside. Without all the deep state propaganda and the mainstream media hype. Of course. And wouldn't it be great if there was some app or an algorithm that would decipher what people really want from all their posts and music and tweets and emails and searches, and then just vote for them. Vote the way they wish they could. Wouldn't that be freedom? Clia! Clia! And with some states still on lockdown and mail-in ballots so unreliable. She would be perfect! Perfect. But wait, how do you know people won't vote the way they want without Clia? They're not slaves. Greg, who are you planning to vote for this fall? Well, I was thinking about Biden. Clia, who would Greg like to vote for this fall? Greg sees himself as a social progressive, but a fiscal conservative. He does not realize that enacting social justice and enforcing civil rights costs money, and that's the first funding cut by conservatives. Greg does not think of himself as a racist or sexist, but is frightened of losing his skin and gender privileges in a more equitable society. Greg was raised in the working class, but has accepted the idea that being a worker is a negative, and that happiness is being able to give orders. Greg also believes the stock market will go down with a change of administration. Greg will not admit it to himself, but he would be relieved if Donald Trump were re-elected. No! It's your algorithm. Greg does not like the president, but from his comments, texts, reading lists, news feed, and anonymous posts, he believes his personal economy will be better with a crooked businessman in the White House. Thank you, Clia. Now, Greg, wouldn't it be better to let Clia vote on your behalf for what you really, truly want? What I want? Think about it. If we could get Clia on phones and tablets and computers across the country before the election, an app that votes for us based on who we really are without all the Me Too, Black Lives Matter guilt, without any anger about rent or schools or homelessness, and without whatever the hell Antifa wants. No more lines at the polls. Just load Clia on your phone and ping! Meaningful, real democracy. But what if you got hacked? The whole election would be a lie. You let us worry about that. All you have to do is license Clia to us for this one election. It would mean a lot of money. You could finally be your own boss. And after this election? We probably won't need it again. He'll think about it. I'll think about it. You do that. I'll let you out here. Another protest. Don't you think they're inconvenient? No. Clia? He does. Of course. Well, I hope you get through safely. If only there was something we could do about all this unrest. Is that what I really want? That's what the algorithm says. Land of the free. Raise up your fist if you want it to be. Home of the brave. Take to the streets if you are. Slavery's chains have never been broken, the board still remains. So for justice we stand, cause power concedes nothing without our want to have some say in my life, to not feel like someone is always standing over me. A lot of people want that. 
I don't know what I'm going to do. Neither do I. Here they come, boys! Let them have it! <laughs> oh! Do that! It Came From R&D is written by Michael Jean Sullivan, directed by Valina Brown. Commercials written by Marie Cartier. Music and lyrics by Daniel Savio. Music production by Dred Scott. Woodwinds by Dylan Jennings, with audio engineering and sound design by Taylor Gonzalez. The protest song is sung by Valina Brown. Commercials for Uber Ales narrated by Rotimi Akbabiaka, with jingle sung by Lisa Hori Garcia. And featuring Jerry and Monroe, Lisa Hori Garcia, Hugo Carbajal, Michael Jean Sullivan, Keiko Shimasato Carrero, and starring Cassie Grilly as Claya and Andre Amaratico as Greg Wittgenstein. And in two weeks, we'll return with Detective Noir and Jade for Hire, Episode 2, The Case of the Wrinkled Egg. the San Francisco Mime Troupe, and for the past 60 years we have been doing political musical comedies for anybody who will listen. The Mime Troupe is a worker-run, multi-ethnic, multi-generational collective of activist artists committed to overthrowing capitalism one musical comedy at a time. And one of these days, we will get it right. Each summer we tour our shows at a price every member of the working class can afford, free. But with theaters and parks closed, protesters in the streets, tear gas in the air, and what could be America's last election looming on the horizon, the Mime Troop needed to make sure our message of art, activism, and revolution was part of the resistance. And nothing says revolutionary fervor like radio plays. And for those wondering how a radical theater can survive these capitalist times, it's because of you. The Mime Troop doesn't take corporate sponsorship. You'll never see the AT&T or Comcast Mime Troop. How could we show the hypocrisies of capitalism if we were in bed with the capitalists? So instead, we are in bed with you, our fellow workers. Let's snuggle. And after that, you can support the troop by visiting our website, sfmt.org. Thank you to the San Francisco Arts Commission, SF Grants for the Arts, California Arts Council, USPPP, the Flyshacker Foundation, the Bernard Osher Foundation, the Zellerbach Family Foundation, the Don Stevens and Nicole Bellotti Laugh and Love Fund, this public radio station, and listeners like you. We'll be here in two weeks for more Tales of the Resistance.